Hello friends and welcome back to the joy of wrenching. I'm your friendly neighborhood mechanic and today we're going to show you how fun and easy it can be to change the lower ball joints on this 2010 Toyota Tacoma. So come along and let's get into it. So we know that this thing has a bad lower ball joint. And the way that we were able to tell that was but when the tire was on here, if you push up and down on the bottom, you'll see a little bit of play in the lower ball joint. So come back here, I'll show you. This is our lower ball joint right here. And whenever we, the tire is on here, or you put some pressure under here, you'll see this close and the, open this gap right here. And that's telling you that the inside of that ball joint has worn out. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that today. So first step in this process, obviously is to remove your wheel, which I've already done. And now what we're gonna end up doing in order to get this part loose and out of the way, we kind of take a look at what needs to come off of here. And so this spindle is attached to the vehicle by a number of things. It's attached here by the sway bar link. It's attached here by this steering tie rod. So we know that those things have to be removed. So let's start right here with our sway bar link. So why don't you come around onto this other side and I'll show you how we get that off of there. So this sway bar end link, all we have to do is remove this nut and then this will slide out. So this nut, in this case, is a 19 millimeter. So we'll try and loosen that thing up. Now look right over here. And if you notice, as I'm trying to loosen this, the whole thing is turning. Well, that could be a problem, can't it? But look right over here. And in the end of this stud, we have a Allen key. And so you can put an Allen wrench in here. In this case, it's a size five, but a lot of times these are sixes. And you can hold that steady while you loosen the nut. See that? Now, once you've loosened that nut, here's a really cool part. You wanna have some fun? Let's have some fun. We can put this wrench in the tightening direction. And as we tighten that stud, basically we'll be loosening this nut. So watch this, this'll be fun. Oops, I need to turn it the other way. <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes. There's no mistakes, just happy little accidents. There we go. Just like that. All right. Well, my tool stayed in there, but there she is, just like that. All right. Now we have our sway bar end link out. We'll go ahead and put the nut back on it so that we don't lose it. There's no way to lose the joy of wrenching faster than to lose your fasteners. Okay, so come around on this side now. And the next thing we need to take off in order to free up our spindle to swing out of the way is gonna be our tie rod end. And if you look right here, you'll see that we have a cast castellated nut. And it's got a cotter pin on it that's holding it from coming apart. So let's get that out of the way first, that little cotter pin. See, it's a bent over here, like that. So we've got to straighten this thing out. And you might need some needle nose for this job. Let's get in here. We just want to straighten that out a little bit. That way, we can get it to come back out of the hole that they put it in. See as we wiggle it, how it's starting to come out right there? Once you can see the end of it, grab hold of it with some cutting pliers, just like this. And then you can kind of rock it back and forth, twist it, pull on it, until it just comes right on out of there. The little rascals get stuck in there sometimes. There it is. Now we can get on to this nut. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use something really fun. This is my favorite tool in the shop, guys. This is, 
high powered impactor. This is a 19 millimeter nut. Just want to get on there. And look how easy that makes it. Again, this is about the joy of wrenching. Having the right tools makes it much more enjoyable. Okay, now you notice this tie rod end did not fall right out. Like, it's stuck in there pretty good. And so, there are a number of different ways that we can get this thing to release, but I want to show you a really fun one. Are you ready? This is going to be fun. A big hammer. Right here, on this meaty part of the spindle, if you strike that real hard with a hammer, it will shock this this connection so hard that this will just fall out. Are you ready? Let's see how many how many licks does it take to get to the bottom of a Tootsie Roll. One, two, three. Not loose yet. Let's try it maybe a little bit harder. Maybe I'm just a little wimpy today. Oh, look at that. Four. See how it just, just like that. Now that our tie rod end is out of the way, loose and flopping around like that, we'll just, we'll just set it there. The next step in removing the spindle off of this lower ball joint is going to be taking this nut off of the lower ball joint. And again, you see that castle? Uh, when you see a castle, there's going to be a cotter pin in it, and, uh, or there should be. And we need to get that cotter pin out of the way, just like we did for this castellated nut. We've got to get back here. Hopefully you can see that. We're just going to straighten that castle. All right, we're going to straighten that cotter pin right out. Scare it straight. And you can use needle nose or some side cutting pliers like I've got here. And all you want to do is you want to straighten out where it was bent so that it couldn't come back through that hole because we want it to come back through that hole. Just give it a little, little love tap so that you can get a hold of this side. Put your cutting pliers on there and just walk, rock it, walk it until it's out of its hole. There we go. Okay, now we need to get this nut off of here and I think, let's see, yeah, that's a 24 millimeter. Go back to our favorite tool, the impact, and let's have some fun. Let's see how hard this is. Woo! Well, that works good, doesn't it? Well, we'll go ahead and leave it on there because we're going to separate that and we don't want it to fall on the ground. Now, the spindle on this Tacoma is actually two pieces. There's a little bracket here that is attached to the main part and it needs to be removed. And so we need to get those two nut, I'm sorry, those two bolts out of the way. And these are 19 millimeters. So there's one, and there's two. Look at that. Did you see that? Look right here. See how easy that was, guys? Now this is free and completely clear. Come look over here now. Get some of this light out of your face. It would help if my light actually kept working now, wouldn't it? But we are completely free and clear to remove this ball joint now that this spindle is out of the way. Now, I don't want to sit here with one hand on it all day, because then I wouldn't have a hand to work with. So what I've got here is a little bungee cord. Come look over here. Got a little bungee cord, and we're gonna hook our bungee cord somewhere on this spindle. How about right there? Oh yeah, that looks like a good spot. And that bungee cord's gonna do our work for us and just hold it out of the way. And now, we can get to this. Let's, let's lower the car down a little bit so that we can work on it a little easier. Our spindle is now out of the way and disconnected from the lower half of the spindle. You see it's just sort of flopping around there, but we need to remove this lower part of the spindle from the ball joint. What I, There's lots of different ways to do this, guys, um, but I want to show you one today. We're gonna use what's called a pickle fork. I know that's kind of a weird name, but we're gonna stick that pickle fork in here and you see how that thing is wedged? As we force it in there, it should force these two things apart. Now, when this thing lets go, 
we don't want it to fall on the floor, so that's why we left this nut on here, just, just kind of loosey-goosey. So we'll wedge our pickle fork in there as much as we can by hand, and now we're gonna hit it with a hammer. So let me get here and give it a few loving bonks. That thing is holding on for dear life. Well, that other pickle fork didn't want to work too well for us, so let's try a different one. There's always another tool, guys, and so let's just step it up a little bit. Let's put this other pickle fork in here, and let's give it a few love taps. It too doesn't want to work for us, does it? Well, time to step up our game a little bit, guys. Well, guys, I told you, there's always another tool. And so we've got here now a ball joint separator. And the way this works is we can put it over this little piece of the spindle and then tighten this little bolt up against the bottom of our ball joint stud. And it will force the two apart. So let's put this in place now. Just kind of wiggle it in place until, look right down here, until this, this bolt is lined up right underneath that stud. Now because this Tacoma's got such a fat end right here, it doesn't want to go perfectly onto that stud just like that. So we might have to get a little bit off, off center on that, but that's okay because we're replacing this. And then we'll tighten up this force and screw and just see what happens. That's a 19 millimeter as well. Watch, see what happens here. There she goes. Wow, that was on there really, really strongly. But with the right tool, guys, it's a joy to work on these things. Yeah, that was on there really good. But you see, when it came loose, it came down in it hit that nut. That's why we left that nut on there so it didn't go flying down and, and break our foot. So we can go ahead and remove, remove that nut now. And there's the lower part of that spindle. We can set that aside for later. I'll go ahead and put that nut back on even though we don't need it anymore. Okay, the next step is going to be removing our ball joint which is pressed in to the lower a arm on this Tacoma. Now if you see right here, around the outside of our ball joint, let me point at it, we have, we have a keeper, this little C-clip. That is put in there so that that ball joint can't fall out. And so in order to get this out of here, we're gonna put a punch right on the ear of that keeper and we're gonna tap on it. Oops, sorry to tap on the camera. We're gonna tap on it, loosen it up, and hopefully it'll just pop right out. Got a few things in our way. Why don't you come around on this side, and I'll try and tap it here. Now see, it just wants to spin around on us, doesn't it? Now, don't let that steal your joy, guys, just because it's being a little bit finicky. Again, we just need to try another tool. So instead, instead of that punch, let's use a big screwdriver. <laughs> a lot of you guys are saying, you know, Les, I don't have all of these fancy tools you've got. Well, I tell you what, you can get a lot done with just a big screwdriver and a big hammer. Let's try that here. This will be fun. We can just get that rascal to stay still for a moment. It's a bit of a challenge. It just wants to keep moving around, doesn't it? Well, what else can we do, guys? Let's try a different tool. Okay, friends, let's try one more thing. I've got a little bitty pick here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try and wedge that in there, and maybe, just maybe, 
that'll hold it still while we try to tap this one out. And I know you may not be able to see really good. Oh yeah, look at that. That worked really well. Look here, we got a gap there. Once you see that gap, you're golden. Now we go back to that specialized tool that all of you guys probably have, a big screwdriver. And we can set that in that gap and move this light out. <laughs> Move this light out of the way. And set that in the gap and then just pry that C clip out of the way. Here she comes. And there she goes. <laughs> Look down there. It didn't go too far. It did bounce around a little bit, but it didn't go too far. Well, we got that, that rascally C-clip out of the way. And so let's just put a little bit of penetrating oil around the edge of this ball joint. What we gotta do is we gotta force this ball joint out of our AR. And again, there's always lots of different ways to do things. And I wanna show you guys the, the fun, easy ways. So I have soaked this a little bit overnight with some of this penetrating oil. I use PB Blaster, but it doesn't matter what your favorite kind is. Now, a lot of different ways to do this. There's a ball joint press like this that we can put in here and it'll force this thing out. And uh, again, if you say, but, but friendly neighborhood mechanic, I don't have all of these fancy tools. You, you want to know you can get this tool for free. That's right. You can go down to your local auto parts store and they will loan you these tools for free. As long as you bring it back, you won't have to pay a darn thing for it. Isn't that great? But a lot of people will revert to the simple, easy method of beating the tar out of it. And so, Let's see how well that works. I'm gonna put on a little hearing protection. Now let's just see what happens if we hit that with a hammer. So right there in the middle, we're gonna give it a strike. And we're gonna see if that gap gets any smaller as the ball joint starts to come out the bottom. Let's watch. Well, I don't know about you, but it doesn't appear that that's made much of a difference. I think part of the problem may be that when I'm hitting on this, the lower A arm is moving down just a little bit. And so let's, let's put something underneath here, a jack, to support the bottom so that it can't do that anymore. Okay, well, we're back. Now we've got a little bit of support underneath our A arm so that when we beat the tar out of this thing, hopefully only the ball joint will move and not the whole lower A arm. Let's see how that works. Whew, it is on there pretty hard. Let's try something fun. I've got a pneumatic hammer here. This is a long reach hammer, air hammer, with a little hammer tip on it. And we're going to go ahead and set this on top of here, and we're going to let this do the hammering for us. Let's see how this works. Try that again. Wow, this one's on there pretty good. So I guess we're gonna have to actually use the press after all. Now we're gonna go ahead and use what's made for this job, guys. So as I mentioned, there's always another tool. So look inside your kit for one of these cups that fits over the top of your ball joint. And then can set this thing in place just like so. Tighten up this piss, this this driving screw here until you've got a tight fit against the top of the ball joint. 
just like that. Make sure that everything's nice and lined up. So you just kind of want to look and make sure that everything's centered. You can feel up through the bottom. See right down through here? Look down through here. There's a hole. You can feel up through the bottom. And if you can see in there, maybe you can see in there, you'll see the bottom of the ball joint stud sticking through there. That way it has a little bit of room to move as I tighten this thing up. So let's go ahead and let's tighten this screw. And as we do so, it should force that ball joint down through. Let's see what happens. So watch right here. And we want to see this gap between our ball joint above and the lower A-arm closed as the, if this is working. You see that gap closing up? That means this is working. Oh, wow, that was fast. <laughs> Woo. Good thing I had a good hold on that. That would have felt really bad falling on my toe and that would have taken the joy out of wrenching. But that worked very well.